These are Lancia, Monte Carlo, and Scorpion taillights. They were also used by the Bitter SC in the 80s. And I'm going to reproduce all six of them in clear, red, and orange for BitterParts.com. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So it all just ends up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Get an Alfred backpack hanger today. Did you know that this video sponsor, PCBWay, has an online 3D viewer? You can upload your STL files, do measurements on them, take photo shots, and you can export to different file formats. So this is a great resource for you and potentially for clients to view parts. Check them out for your next project. Link in the description below. Okay, these lenses are relatively labor intensive. There are eight total parts for each lens, not including the fasteners, and I have to make 10 sets. So there's 80 parts to mold and make to make these taillights. The first thing I'm doing is putting the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaning off any grit and grime. These parts are quite old. And then we're gonna polish them to remove any scratches or imperfections from being used over the years on a vehicle so that we can cast a really nice part. Next, I'm going to 2D scan them on a flatbed scanner so that I can make a 3D printed splitter board. With the parts scanned, I'm able to make a 3D printed splitter board and I print that here on my Bamboo X1 Carbon. Excellent printer. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to get yourself one. Now I'm cutting out the sides for the mold boxes and drilling all the corners so that they can be easily screwed together. And there's a few pieces of wood here that that needs to be done to. Notice I'm using real wood and not particle board as the real wood is much, much less likely to split when you put screws into it versus something cheap. We'll use some white glue and adhere the parts down to the 3D printed splitter board. I'm gonna tape shut the openings in the tail lights and we're gonna close the walls around the mold. Now that the molds are put together, we're gonna pour in some silicone into the first part of the silicone mold. We'll mix that up. I'm using BJB's 5150. We'll degas that. And I'm adding a little colorant here. So when I pour the silicone in, it'll be dyed and you'll be able to see what color the part is for the mold. I'm using some vibration here from a dental vibration tool to help me raise the bubbles to the top surface and make sure that they don't get trapped on the part and so that I get a really nice silicone pour, even uniform bubble free. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna remove those 3D printed splitter boards so that we can set up the part for the second half of the silicone mold. I label the wood, so when I take it apart, I know which parts go where when I put it back together. Those are all the half molds so far. I'm gonna stretch out some copper, and these are gonna be copper pieces that are used for the vent holes for when I make the silicone molds. I cut them about two, two and a half inches long. Use a special stripping tool and it makes the job much, much easier. All right, I've got a good bag of copper vent hole tubes and I 3D print the pour sprues. 
put down some super glue and some accelerator on the other side and I glue all the vents and the pour sprue in place using a little bit of super glue. I'm pouring from low to high so these tools will all get tipped at about 10-15 degrees. The pour will be at the black pour sprue and the resin will then vent up through the copper. Now I'm adding release agent onto the silicone and only the silicone. This is naphtha and petroleum jelly and this prevents the second half of the silicone mold from sticking to the first. I'm going to use more BJB 5150 silicone, mix this up in uh, equal parts and we want to mix it really, really well and then into the vacuum chamber it's going to go where the silicone is degassed. You want to degas your silicone to remove all the air bubbles out of the silicone so that none of these air bubbles are trapped against the part or in the silicone mold to help you get a perfect silicone mold with no defects in it so that you can reproduce the parts flawlessly. I pour from one place and then let the silicone flow out. I add a little bit of colorant. This just helps me later on. I let the parts cure overnight and we can demold. So we want to take the master part out of the silicone molds, remove the vents and the sprue, and let's take the master part out, and this gives us our two perfect mold halves. Notice how shiny and beautiful the surfaces are reproduced so that we can get quality parts later on down the line. Really happy with how they come out. They're really flawless. And this will give us some excellent, excellent parts. So for this project, we're gonna use BJB WC85DL water clear resin. It's very thin and pours really nice. It has great UV stability and we'll be able to dye it with no problem to tint the lenses. I'm always wearing a respirator when I'm mixing up resin so that I'm safe. For the orange and the red parts, we'll take the part B of the resin and we'll add colorant to that. That allows me to make a batch of color and have a unified color for all the parts. And then I'm always just pouring from that master batch of colored resin and then adding the other part of the resin in and I'm gonna get consistent color parts. For the clear parts, I don't need to add any colorant. I'm just gonna mix at the correct ratio, which I believe is 100 to 65 to mix up this material. And then into the vacuum tank, both colors go. I'm degassing them separately here. Take all the bubbles out of the resin. Now this is super critical because you don't want any resin that you pour into the molds to have bubbles in it. And so you use the vacuum tank to remove those bubbles out of the mixture before you put it into the mold. And this is what you want your resin to look like. There are some bubbles, it's probably just CO2 that I'm pulling out of the mixture, not an issue. So you can see the molds are all on sheets of glass tipped at about 15 degrees and I'm just pouring in the resin using gravity to let that resin flow from the low part of the mold up into the high part and push out any possible air that is either trapped in the mold or possible air bubbles in the resin so that we have a perfect bubble free resin part. Next, the parts go into the pressure tank and they're cured with heat under pressure at 60 PSI for about six hours, roughly. 
to show you cured resin that was not cured in a pressure tank and this is why you need a pressure tank so that the resin does not react to the humidity in the air and the bubbles are crushed to a very small size that you can't see so you can get a good part like this so very pleased with these first parts here let's check out the orange sections these also look nice yes only nine more sets to go I've cast up a set of red lenses. Let's take a look at that. Oh, what's that? Wait a minute, something's not right. Okay, there's an original part and that's not right. Something's not right. Okay, let's take a look. So it turns out that the original red lenses have a secondary lens inside of them, this reflective piece here. So now we're gonna have to make a new mold for this and remake half of the red lens mold to accommodate this, we need a lens. So this one I got should work. I got the client to send me a few more parts and dismantle some of these lenses. So we're gonna have to make a mold of this part. This one's decent. Luckily it just popped out and I didn't have to destroy it. And the cool thing is, is that they're the same on the right and on the left. So I only need to make one mold. This is one of the parts that I'm showing you, but we need to figure out how to remove this reflector piece so that we can cast the red lens correctly so we can insert the reflector later. Let's clean the reflector part in the ultrasonic cleaner to remove any grime or debris that may be left over from, you know, 50, 60 years of use. And we'll clean it up and then we'll head over to the polishing wheel and we'll polish that as well. This part mm, is not the greatest part, but it's the best part that I have access to. And so it needs to be cleaned up as good as possible. And here I've got a 3D printed splitter board and I'm pouring the first half of the mold for these little reflector parts. This is a relatively big setback to have to create more molds than you originally anticipate and to modify existing ones. And I'm gonna make these molds the same I did for the other ones, basically removing the splitter board, now adding the vent uh, copper wires here and ultimately we'll put in a pour sprue for the part we'll put it back into the mold box and we'll put on some release agent which i didn't show here and then pour in the rest of our silicone to make the second half of the mold let's demold this take a look how it came out remove the vent copper wires check out the part and let's make one we use some red tinted resin the 5150 here as well and you can see it comes out of the vents after it's been pressure cast and we'll get our first part here this is pretty nice clean no bubbles yes I have to cut up a perfectly good part because I need to remove that reflector so that I can cast this part correctly and then be able to insert the reflectors into the space. And I do this on my drill press with a cross slide vise and I mill out that original reflector the best I can with the tools that I have. There's minimal cleanup to be done here from some of the chipping from the original uh, acrylic uh, cement that was used to bond the two pieces together. So I have to do a little bit of sanding and a little bit of cleanup in a few spots so I can get a nice clean surface. And then I'm gonna come back and polish the inside area so that it's really nice. And this is what it would look like from the factory you want to have a nice transparent surface you don't want to have any cloudiness or scratches or anything in there 
you want to be able to have that light transfer through the part and get that true reflection and have the part look just like it did when it came from the factory back in the 80s. All right, so here's the part cleaned up, ready to go. We're going to put this back onto the second half of the mold, and we're going to remold from the top. And this would have been the original first surface of the mold. It's not ideal, but it's the only option I have short of remaking both halves of the mold. Now, one of them does not come out correct, and I have to remold it again to get a good mold half. Let's check out if this molding came out good. Hopefully it did and the part was seated correctly and we're not getting any additional gaps and we get a nice two-part silicone mold even though we're using different silicones. Looks like we're good to go. I'm also using a batch of red that I mix up ahead of time with the B part of the resin, and then I'm just adding the A part to it so I can get consistency. The resin is gonna go into the vacuum chamber there behind me to get degassed, and then it will come out and we'll just gravity feed it into the molds here for the red parts down below. And then we'll put them in the pressure tank. There's a 10 gallon pressure tank and cure them. And these are the parts that we get. So these are very nice parts. I'm very pleased they came out pretty good. Now we want to bond in those reflector parts. We're gonna finally get to that. So we'll clean up the bottom of the reflectors. I'm using a file just to make them nice and flat. And then I'm gonna use a sharp edged tool to remove any really sharp edges from the part so that they are a little bit more natural and don't have any edges sticking up. I'm gonna use a urethane resin. This is BJB's WC753, and it's a little softer, and we'll use this resin as an adhesive, and it has some flexibility to it, and this will allow the part to expand and contract because it's outside, gets warm, gets cold. And we don't want that lens to come out. So we're gonna use an adhesive here that is a little bit softer than the lens material parts themselves. And this will allow the parts to expand and contract and have a good lifespan. All right, and they're all bonded in and we just use some clamps with minimal force to connect them together and allow them to cure to get the final lenses and now these look like the original factory ones nice and clear the way they're supposed to be with the reflector in the right spot here's the 10 sets of the resin red lenses all bonded together. There was a little detour to get to this spot and extended the length of the project, I would say, quite by quite a bit for my client. Let's put one of these lenses together with the parts and you'll see I'm screwing in the fasteners and I'm gonna do a whole separate video about how to make these fasteners because I had to make 300 fasteners orange red and clear ones of course to go with the tail light sets and they go together perfect of course really nice happy with the final quality there'll be a link in the description below if you want to get yourself a set for your lancia or your bitter make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.